this video, I'm going to show you how to create this club scene from the social network using the newer 660 RGB kit. Let's get into it. This is water. So I've been using the newer 660 RGB panels for the past couple months now for my YouTube setups and it really has been great to use. I just throw them in the back of my YouTube videos, whether if I just want to add a splash of color or what I found is kind of mixing different colors and getting this dual tone look, which I really like to play with for my B roll setups or even my A roll. When you first get your newer 660 RGB kit, it's gonna come in this nice carrying case, which is gonna hold everything. Your light stands, your lights, even the power adapters, all inside one contained thing, which I do like. The light stands are pretty basic, but they do a pretty good job at working and supporting the weight of these lights. Take a look at the LEDs panels themselves. They are made out of a metal construction with some plastic bits here and there. They actually take Sony MPF style batteries. Along the back, you're gonna find your controls, including your on and off switch, whether you're going from battery power to wall power. You're gonna find your mode switch and some dials to control the brightness of the light, as well as to change the color temperature or the hues of the light. The controls are really basic. I do find though, when I'm trying to change between color temperatures or even just the brightness of the light, it takes quite a bit of time just to crank it over to 100%. Just a minor downside. So take a look at battery life for the newer 660 RGB. I put in two Sony MPF 970 batteries on the back, blasted at 100%, 5600 Kelvin, and it lasted for three hours and 42 minutes, or long enough to watch six episodes of The Mandalorian. So to get a sense of how bright this light can actually get, I thought I would compare it to something like this Aperture MC pocket LED light, since many people have something very similar to this in their kit probably. So comparing the output, I was able to get about three stops brighter than this could output, which is quite substantial. And the great thing about these 660 RGB panels is they're the same brightness, whether you're in 5600 Kelvin or in the RGB modes, same amount of output that cannot be said with this MC, which it gets a little darker on those RGB modes. So now I want to touch on some negatives of the 660 RGB lights. These lights do get fairly warm after being on for a certain amount of time. I noticed they got pretty warm to the touch. Nothing like it was going to burn me, but yeah, it still was not comfortable to hold. So I would recommend a little bit of cool down time before you kind of pack it away. The next con is the mobile app. So while I download the app and it seemed to work pretty fine, especially with one light, um, the real struggle came when I tried to operate each individual light independently. Um, it's, was kind of confusing and I couldn't really get it right. So I just ditched the app and I just decided, you know what, I'll operate the light independently um, in a small space that works good. And I figured just being on set, I just like operating each light rather than trying to fiddle with a mobile app. To put this RGB kit to the test, I decided I would recreate a film scene and try to emulate that with an affordable filmmaking kit and see how well I get the lighting to match. So the scene I decided to recreate was from the social network and the club scene. As far as the camera equipment, I was using the Sony a7S III, a Sigma 50 millimeter f1.4, an ND8 filter, and the Tiffin Black Promist 1.8. So the first light I decided to set up was the key light. And looking at the film, you can see that they're being lit by the table, which has kind of a soft glow under lighting them. So what I decided to do is I just took an LED panel, put it on the floor right in front of me, and I set it to the party mode, and you can see that the light's changing color. And then I decided to place a five in one reflector right above that to kind of diffuse the light and give me a more flattering under light look. And that got me pretty close to how that film looked. The next light I set up was my back hair light. Um, as you can see in the film, it seems like the light is panning around the room. I decided to recreate that by using the fire truck effect on the LED panel. I used the barn doors to kind of hone in on just the back of my head, and it feels more energetic like things are happening in the scene. And the third light I used as a practical way in the back, so it kind of break up that dark look back there. And I tried to emulate some of that warm practical lights like in the film. So I set it to a warm kind of orange yellow look, and I just left that on in the background just to add some interest. And lastly, I actually used the little MC lights on the reflection of this TV, just to again, add a little bit more interest to break up so much of that darkness. 
And that was what I used to create that club scene. So you can see how versatile these lights can really be. You can use one as a key, you can use one as a backlight, and you can use one as a practical light in different scenarios. And I think it looks pretty good. So overall, what are my thoughts on the newer 660 RGB? And I'm gonna break this down between buying a single panel versus the kit. If you were to buy one LED panel, I think it's pretty good, you know, pretty good colors, battery life lasts a good amount of time. It's pretty decent for the price as well. Um, again, it's fairly basic, and that's why I think buying the kit makes a lot of sense. If you were to buy the kit, which comes with the light stands, the lights, everything you need to get started, it's a very versatile, easy, and convenient kit to pick up. And when you go into situations when you wanna create a club scene or whatever, or just to add some interest to your backgrounds, you have the versatility of having a normal LED panel and also RGB if you ever decide you need that. And if you wanna get more flexibility with your kit, you can purchase accessories and modifiers for these LED panels like a softbox. And that would add to the overall versatility of your kit because you can in effect have a key light softbox like this, like I have here, and you could even decorate your background with the other two RGB panels. So that is it for my review of the newer 660 RGB kit. If you found this video useful or entertaining, make sure to leave a like down below. That's it for this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.